All right, here's a little tutorial for folks who are starting with WeView for the first time. Uh, the kits are all sorted and ready to go. You'll notice that they're numbered. There's the first tier, pieces, gears, rubber bands, all kinds of good stuff. And the second tier. The second tier has what we'll call the brick. This is our main computer. The brick has two ports, a number that corresponds to your kit, a button and a light. There is a motor. There is a motion sensor, is what they call it. Notice it looks kind of like eyes. It's an emitter receiver, so it shoots out light at a wavelength that we can't see. Um, that bounces off something and comes back. That tells it how far that something is. Uh, this can tell when things are about 10 to 15 centimeters away all the way down to zero. And this last sensor is a tilt sensor, also known as a gyroscope. So it can tell when it's being tilted, what direction it's being tilted. So this is fairly straightforward. You'll notice if you press the button on the brick, it starts beeping and flashing. This is the brick saying I'm awake and I'm looking for an iPad to pair with. If it doesn't see one, it shuts itself off. So let's take a look at the software. Uh, we'll be using the WeDo 2.0 software. That is gonna be loaded on every iPad. So when you launch it, usually there's a little splash screen with a few things you can get past. And you'll see what our um, startup screen looks like. In general, kids are going to be creating projects later. Um, a pressing plus will take them to a new project. Pressing home takes them back to this starting screen. If they've done previous work, it'll be shown here and they can get back to it by pressing on that icon. Um, we are going to be actually utilizing some already programmed classroom projects. If you click on that, it'll take you through to quite a few. Many are tempting, but we're going to start with Spy Robot. If you click through on that, you'll see that there's a little bit intro of the story and then the build instructions. It's fairly straightforward. Everybody will have the pieces to build this, but it's essentially putting a brick onto a uh, body and then have a rotating head that has the motion sensor attached to it. We can stand that up and that's what we're going to use as our base for programming. When kids are done with that, you'll see they come to the screen that asks them to connect their device. So let's do that. When you try to connect your device, you're going to see it gives you a quick instruction. Press the button. All right, let's do it. This is looking for the screen. Oh, there's a smart hub. If we click on that, you'll see that they're paired. That turns green and this light turns blue and stays blue. Um, each of the bricks has a name. They should be named We Do 10 or We Do 5. Looks like somebody changed it and I'll have those in order for us on Saturday. If you need to unpair, you can go ahead and do that. Repair. Now it's really important, I mean, we should just change this name right away. It's really important to realize that we're going to have um, many bricks and to know which one is yours is important. So having the right name in there is good. The kids might want to change the name. We'll just have to deal with it. All right, once that's paired, you can move on. And you see there's an example of the programming language here and the program that we want to run. And it gives them a few other little ideas, but let's get back to the lobby and start our program. So we're paired. Let's start a new project. The new project is going to have us add a motion sensor to the brick. So let's plug that in. You can use either slot. It can only go in one way. And you'll notice when I added the motion sensor, a picture of the motion sensor popped up here on the screen. When I take it out, it disappears. Okay, so this tells you that it's plugged in and recognized. 
and the number next to it indicates how far away something is. So it's got a resolution of about 15 centimeters. 15 in this case would be, you know, and beyond would show you a 10. And as things come closer, all right, hopefully you can see that number going down. So it's 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And 0 means that something is right on top of it. So we can, we can tell what's happening. All right, our program is composed of these blocks down here that we can slide and drag and drop. Um, let's start by adding a weight block. You see it has a one underneath there, that means one second. If you click on it, you can change that to anything, five seconds. Or if you wanna get rid of them, we can use some of these other um, sensor blocks as the input to how long we should wait. In this case, we want to wait until that sensor sees movement. We want the movement to be front or back. If you click on that, you'll notice it changes. So you can have things only looking at uh, approaching item uh, objects or departing objects. Let's keep it back and forth. And then we want some music to play or a sound to play afterwards. So let's add that. Programming is sequential. When you press play, it does the first thing then it'll do the second thing, then the third, and it won't continue until it completes the previous step. So if I press play, you'll see that the yellow for weight is pulsing. That means that's where it is in here. It makes sense because we're at 10. It means nothing is nearby. When I pass my hand nearby, we should hear a sound play. All right, so that means it's working. Let's play it again. Kids are going to say, I want a different sound. So if they press on that, they can cruise through and find different sounds. Oh, that sounds intimidating. So their program could be more personalized. Uh, you'll definitely see experimentation because they'll start noticing, well, these look really familiar. Like this looks like a picture. Maybe it'll make a picture show up. This looks like colors on my brick. Maybe it'll make colors show up. So we can add that in. And now I should see when there's motion, my brick light will turn red and then a sound will play. Kids might say, I want to do something even fancier. Um, you can have the sound be randomized. You'll notice there's a random block, and so instead of playing sound 15, I want it to play a random sound every time. It's going to be different. Try that again. Okay, let's play it one more time. So you'll notice um, a lot of experimentation. That's fine. That's great. These things are intentionally meant to be easy to understand. They look like puzzle pieces. Things connect into them when it's possible. They're meant to look like the items that they're representing so kids can play around. Um, the idea being that we want to get the base program there and then we can build on it and kind of personalize it, make it their own. Uh, they may have some really strong ideas about how they want the program to run. That's fine. Um, that creativity is what we're looking to get here. What, what we want to avoid is kids just grabbing millions of pieces and throwing them up here and not understanding what they're doing. Um, so that's why we want to start small. And when you start small, can share it, build on that, and show me what you're working on. That's a... First look at our programming. When you're done with your brick, if you hold the button for a few seconds, you'll notice it'll start to flash. And then once it makes that shutdown sound, you can let go and you're all ready to put it away.